Hey, Nature Detectives, I'm Conrad. I'm an outdoor educator with the New York State Office of Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation at Lechor State Park, and today I have a nature mystery for you. I wonder, how will this year's gypsy moth infestation end? Gypsy moths, also known as disper moths, D-I-S-P-A-R, are evenly distributed across New York State. They love to eat our native trees, especially oak trees. And in Letchworth State Park, a lot of people have been noticing the caterpillars this summer, the fuzzy ones with the red and blue dots. But that infestation will end. Using just a couple nature clues, we can figure out how. All we have to do is take a look at a disper moth caterpillar right now. I have one inside the scientific jar of science. In fact, to give you a better look, I'll take it right on out. Let's look at it right in my hand here. Now you notice that this caterpillar has undergone a huge change since the last time we saw them. It no longer has the six pointy legs up in the front and the five suction cup legs in the back of a caterpillar. In fact, it's kind of hard to tell where its head is and where its tail is. This caterpillar is going through metamorphosis. It has shed its skin and it has emerged as a chrysalid. A chrysalid is what's inside of a moth's cocoon. So that thin kind of meshy webby stuff that they spin around themselves, that's the cocoon part. And this little hard shelled thing is the chrysalid. It's like a chrysalis inside of a cocoon. And inside of this chrysalid state, you notice that this uh, disper moth isn't moving very much. It's not very active. If you poke them, they can move around a little bit, but it's not active. It's also not eating anything. It's not eating anything at all. In fact, when it emerges from this chrysalid in a couple weeks, it won't eat anything at all for the rest of its life. Adult disper moths don't feed. They don't drink nectar. They don't eat pollen. They don't drink from mud puddles. They don't functionally eat anything at all. These moths only job when they get out of this chrysalid is going to be to find other moths and lay eggs. So if you think about it, as these disper caterpillars wrap their cocoons around themselves and go into this chrysalid state, they are never going to eat again. So as more and more caterpillars grow up and go into their cocoons and become chrysalids, that feeding will decrease and decrease and decrease until it stops. Just you watch, just you watch in August, after all these moths have emerged from their uh, cocoons and they're adults, they'll never eat again. All of our oak trees are going to bud out and grow new leaves. Just watch. Think about it. If there's an oak tree that's older than, say, 30 years old, we have plenty of oak trees in Letchworth that are over 100 years old. But if there's one that's more than 30 years old, it's been through a disper moth infestation before. In the 1980s, there was a great big outbreak of disper moth caterpillars. And there's a lot of hope besides just that, waiting for them to go away as they grow up. In the nearby town of Geneseo, New York, there are disper moth caterpillars all over the oak trees, but most of them are dead hanging there, kind of limp, kind of like an empty balloon. They've been killed by some kind of disease. I don't know if it's a virus or a fungus. Somebody smarter than me would probably know. Notice how they hang in kind of a V shape. Their suction cup feet stick to the tree, but their pointy true legs release the, from the tree and they kind of dangle there. All of these dead caterpillars are evidence that there are natural checks and balances in play. It's not enough to totally wipe them out, but these European moths and caterpillars are susceptible and vulnerable to viruses and fungi, especially after a good rain. Sometimes you'll see lots of dead disper caterpillars hanging on trees like this in that V shape. It does happen sometimes that there's an outbreak of disease in a population that's that high, where almost all the caterpillars are touching each other on the trees. It's easy for disease to spread right through them very easily if they're all close together. There tend to be peaks and valleys, rising and falling, of disper populations over the years. If you think about it, any tree that is older than, say, 30 years old, 
there are plenty of very old trees in Letchworth that are older than 100 years old. If it's older than 30, it's been through a disper moth outbreak in the past. In the 1980s, there was a great big outbreak of disper moths. And the trees that are alive today have survived that. They're budding out and leafing out. Just you watch, in August, later this summer, we'll have fresh leaves on our oak trees. If you are starting to see these cocoons around where you live, you can learn a lot about butterflies and moths from looking at them up close. You can strip away that very thin silk cocoon. That won't hurt the chrysalid inside. In fact, if you poke that chrysalid very gently with your finger, it should move around. That living creature will squiggle and squirm and push and squeeze back. And you can still see right on the chrysalid the vague shape of the wing of the moth that line right there, that kind of flat plate on the chrysalid, that will eventually be the wing of the moth. And you see that smaller little flat plate? Looks maybe like another little wing under there. That's not a wing. That will be the moth's antenna. The moth's antenna and the moth's wing are already visible on the skin of this chrysalid. When it comes time, the adult moth will crack open the skin of that chrysalid and crawl through that webbing cocoon and emerge as an adult. The males are small and kind of gray. The females are bigger and white. The females have wings, but they never use them. They never fly. They'll sit next to their chrysalid and wait for a male to find them and then she'll lay her eggs. And that is where the real work begins. For homeowners who want to prevent big outbreaks of disper moths on their property, you can go in the fall and in the spring and scrape off those egg masses. They look kind of like a thumbprint of foam on the side of a solid object. Think a rock, a building, a sign, a bench, especially look underneath benches. They like to hide underneath benches to make their chrysalids, and that's where the females will wind up laying their eggs. Scrape off those eggs if you see them into a bucket of soapy water, and that will kill the eggs before they ever develop into caterpillars. Keep in mind that every egg mass has hundreds of tiny eggs in there, and you're preventing hundreds of tiny caterpillars from hatching in the spring. If they're not scratched off, those little foamy caterpillar uh, Eggs will overwinter and stay for the months and months of the very cold weather and survive. And then in the spring, they'll hatch out and continue the life cycle again. Well, thank you so much for joining me for today's Nature Mystery. If you have any questions about disper moths, please put a comment in the comment section below the video. Share this video with your friends to put their nature detective skills to the test. And as always, like Leshore State Park's Facebook page and Instagram page to stay tuned for more nature mysteries.